Hey, this is Stu, and of course we're here uh, this time, not at Purple Valley at all, where I'm on vacation, sort of, with John Scott, and I'm here with, also with Josephine Wilkstrom, and we've had this fantastic retreat, we're coming towards the end, and it's a real sort of nature spot in Sweden, it's called Urnatur, is that how I pronounce it? Correct. Closely. And um, so it's set in the forest, and we've got the lake behind us, and so I thought, really nice time to sort of talk to John about how we can connect to nature and maybe the planets and what that means in the yoga practice and that sort of thing. So... Oh, that's a big one, Stu. That's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> so where um, are we going to start? Let's start with Ernatur. Yeah. Because uh, Ernatur actually spells you are nature. Yeah. And that's from uh, Hawken and Ulrika, who uh, are the owners of this retreat center. And um, Hawken gave a beautiful presentation the other night about returning to nature or returning to natural ways of, of um, uh, let's say, being husbandry or farming the nature or yeah. working with plants and their natural way of growth rather than just being clear felled and planting specific yeah, so varieties. Everything is built from stuff they've got on their land, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Mm. But in terms of connecting to nature, maybe that's what we're doing in our um, yoga practice. If we read the texts, yes. the philosophical studies are uh, you're seeking or, or journeying towards your original nature. So what is our original nature if we, when we call ourselves humans, yeah. but basically we're just animals growing, I mean, wearing clothes. <laughs> growing. <laughs> growing, clothes. growing and wearing clothes. You know, and then we've got the, as Hawken was saying, because we've got the capacity to, to reason yeah. and use our digits, we're able to elevate ourselves in terms of the animal world. But uh, for me, the, the inquiry is, uh, what, who is my natural self? What is my natural self? And so when we look at the text and we go back, the Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga, although it's, it's now only called Ashtanga Yoga, yeah. I keep on thinking of it as Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga and that it's a dynamic flowing asana practice that I'm doing, yeah. it still comes under the umbrella name of Hatha Yoga. So for me, Hatha Yoga, I want to know what that means. So Ha is sun and Tha is moon. And so if yoga is, in, in this sense, a balancing of the sun and moon energies. And so one of my famous questions when I start a retreat is, <laughs> well, every day I say to my class, where is, where, the, is the moon? <laughs> where is the moon? And people go... <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, Stu, where is the moon tonight? This time, this is the second time <laughs> we filmed this because we made a little bit of an ass of it. So, actually, I know this time that it's like directly behind, behind you. Yeah. But I know it because of how you explained. Because yeah. it's a little bit cloudy, isn't it? Yeah, it's cloudy at the moment. So, unfortunately, it's going to rain this evening. Fortunately for the farm. Uh, but in nature, you tend to see the sunrise, sunset mm. more than you do in the city. In a city, you've got the light pollution yeah. for stars, but you've got buildings, and often um, the, the moon is on a horizon yeah, so it's obscured. and obscured by a building. Um, but I've been studying it for a long time, and we can put that into a philosophical context too, is that in our Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga, we've got our Yama Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. So six, seven, and eighth limb, yeah. Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. When they come together, it's called Samyamana. And the texts say, if you study with Samyamana on the sun channel, right. you will understand earth. That's a code that still has to be translated again. Right. And then it says, if you study with Samyamana on the... Uh, the moon channel, you'll understand the stars. And so I, I have a lovely story about my dad, which I could probably weave into this yeah. little talk. But so, <clears throat> referring to the body in the text, it's the, the right nostrils, your sun or surya channel, the yeah. pingala, and the left nostrils, your um, moon or your ida, um, the chandranadi. And so everything on the right side is is basically your daytime physical and everything on the left side your nighttime mental academic and um, or you could talk about the two hemispheres of the brain yeah and yeah. also we tend to breathe through yeah. one yeah. sometimes more yeah. than another yeah, yeah. when being more active or more so at, yeah. the, at the moment i tend to be slightly blocked for an, for quite a period of time my right nostrils more restricted than my left uh -huh. 
course the practice evens that out because the, the Yoga Chikitsa especially, the primary series, building up what it do is, is rebalancing things. So I'm balancing out yeah. the sun and moon channels. But my sun channel is mainly blocked because I feel like I'm probably needing a damn good holiday, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get one. Though, you? <laughs> yeah. So um, the sun and moon is really important in the sense that if you do dharana, if you keep concentrating on the sun yeah. or keep concentrating on the moon, you're going to get some information about it. So I've been concentrating on the moon. I've been fixated in another, another <laughs> sense, which is dhyana, yeah. or on the moon. And the samadhi or the, the samyama of that study of the moon is not just in this moment. It can be in this moment, no, yeah. but because I've been doing it for days, for weeks, for months, for years, I can go, just walk out the, the door and go, the moon will be there. You know exactly, don't you? Yeah. yeah, so my timing is, you know, pretty good. I can look down, I can say the moon's actually down there right. when it's on the other side of the, right. the planet. And, and, and so we then get to learn that if, I, uh, if you just study, if you study the, the moon, you will understand the moon. You'll also understand its relationship then to sun and earth. And it appears that the sun goes from east to west, and it appears that the full moon rises in the east and sets in the west, but that's because we, the big rock Earth, is rolling towards the east. Yeah. The moon is orbiting the Earth, and it takes 28, 29 days to orbit. We only see one side of the moon. The far side of the moon is not the dark side of the moon. Dark moon which on the solar calendar, the Christian calendar, is no longer called dark moon, it's called new moon. Mm -hmm. That's the day after the dark moon. Now the dark moon is the complete opposite, the complement to full moon. Full moon, it's hard to decide which day is exactly full moon, it's three days. Yeah, it looks so yeah. similar, doesn't it? Yeah. So for three days. And similarly, on the dark moon, you lose the moon for three days. Mm. Why do we lose the moon? Where is the moon when it's dark? The it's interesting there, thing it? is it's in the sky all day, Stu. Mm. So on the full moon phase, yes, from moon rise to moon set is that 12-hour period of nighttime. Mm. I remember going to the Shala to Guruji's early in the morning and seeing the setting moon on the day after wow. the full moon day yeah. off practice. Yeah. And so that, that's where I really started to make the connection was because we started to see the moon in India. Mm. And especially at Purple Valley, you know I go crazy because yes. we see, the, the, we so see that easy, new moon, so clear and that, so sh that Shiva moon. So the Shiva moon is really interesting because in my child mind of exploration and inquiry, I've, I believe that the, the, the original symbol of symbols yeah. was an eclipse. So that's like the very edge that you're seeing. Yeah, but to draw an eclipse or record an eclipse mm. is very difficult because it just ends up being a circle. Mm. It can mean many things. But if you draw a crescent moon, it means a lot more. It's just, mm. just before the full eclipse or just after the we full eclipse. It, but the, they have records time immoral of big things that have happened mm. on solar eclipses. Mm. Now what's interesting is we can chart back the solar eclipses, we can chart forward the solar eclipses because they happen potentially every month. Every month is a potential solar eclipse. Every month is a potential lunar eclipse. Mm -hmm. That's if the alignment is center to center to center. If the variations of the wobbles in the seasons means it's not center to center alignment. So it's not going to always happen. Mm. And it's just coincidental. It's, it's like there's a big cosmic uh, sacred geometry out there that if the moon was any closer, mm. we, every high tide, low tide would be a tsunami. Right. The gravitational pull yeah, would probably, be too much. Yeah. If the moon was further away, that we wouldn't have the same seasons the way we have them. Yeah. Now the, the 108 factor is the interesting thing, is that the moon is 108 times its diameter away from us. 
and the sun, we are 108 times the diameter of the sun away from the sun. The ratio of the size of the sun to the size of the moon, when they line up, they're the same size. And of course, that's how we get this amazing solar eclipse. So what happens with the solar eclipse? If the eclipse is the first ever symbol, it ended up being a crescent, but then ended up being horns, like the, yeah. the horns of a cow. The bull becomes quite significant, and even if you get right back down, there might be a line. I'm, I'm, prophesizing. Oh no, no I'm, I'm, assuming. Yeah. The, the, down the line, you could say the Brahmin cow. Yes. The horns. Maybe the horns of the cow. Yeah. 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 So, um, the eclipse. Uh, for me, my inquiring mind then goes, "What does the word eclipse mean?" And the word eclipse means to block or to surpass. Let's go back in symbology again. Saints, Jesus, Buddha are all depicted with a halo. Golden disc. Yeah. That's an eclipse. I haven't read it anywhere, haven't found it anywhere. It's just come from my practice, come from my my inquiry and my, yeah. my dharana, dhyana, samadhi on the moon and the sun and the earth. And so what it is, is if those two, let's take those two people, let's take uh, the Buddha, Jesus or Guruji yeah. and use them as exemplars. Exemplars of people that eclipse their self. What self? Their selfish self, their self-centered self, their self-important self, their little self the ego self. The ego, yeah. If we can transcend that, we'll find our selfless self. So in other words, we could eclipse ourselves. We could be second to none. <laughs> yeah, okay? Yeah? yeah? And so what's special is, is that, okay, every month there's a potential solar eclipse and maybe something significant happened in terms of Jesus' life and all that sort of stuff. That he becomes one of those ones that's eclipsed with these big discs. The, 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 the eclipse is actually called a nimbus. And a nimbus is a ring or a halo or a radiance of light. Mm -hmm. Now, in the symbology, if you have a look at a classic Jesus picture, his heart's ripped open. And there's rays of light coming out oh, of his yeah, heart, yeah, heart and there's yeah. a red rose mm -hmm. and a halo. Now the Buddha has one big disc and a second big disc yeah. behind him. Find the heart, the center of that's the heart. In the Indian systems, we've got flowers all the way up, yeah. lotuses. Yeah. So the Christians will just borrow, you know. <laughs> Borrowed a flower. So, so for, for me as a designer, as, a, as a, a very much a child inside me in my inquiry, how do I return to nature? Well, the yogis went in to study the universe. As is the atom, so is the, the universe. As is the universe, so is the atom. And the, the repetition of pattern. And so I, I go, okay, this might be the sun channel and this might be the moon channel and I'm balancing those out. And if I go into a little bit of a dream about that, a daydream, I see the double helix curve. Mm. And because we have spirals all the way through yeah. the body, really, yeah. don't we? Yeah, I don't see it tied up in knots. I see it as a, but if it's not like that, if it's collapsed, it is tied up in knots. And that's how Guruji explained it to me. He said, knots that tight so we're the practice is to untie those knots to free up that central channel for the central channel to flow so in my original nature is is, is thinking how can i f embody this and so i look at jesus and i maybe there are some statues or frescoes of jesus like this but most of the time you see there's a grace yes you might have seen the Buddha troubled. Like in contemplation in con or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, or contemplation means being in the past. Mm. And so it's a real postural thing. If you've got a heavy heart, you're in the past, you're in regret, you're in mm. memory. If you're countering that and the heart comes forward and up, this is being a little bit more I, self-centered, mm. and ego, and arrogant, 
but it's in the future, meaning what's in it for me. Mm. And this is sort of in, this is the systems against me. Yeah. And so for me, if we're balancing all that out, we've got an interesting situation going on here. <laughs> if I, instead of thinking of this being my, my sun and this being my moon, yeah. I place my head as the sun and my pelvis as the earth. And then just closing my eyes, if I exhale down into earth and then inhale, imagine the great distance between the head, sun, pelvis, earth. Just that alone brings my heart moon into a line. With a little bit of fine tuning, a little bit of tweaking with the pelvic floor and a little bit of tweaking with the abdomen and lumbar, a little bit of my armpits, there's a bit of armpit bunder in there, uh, and neck and throat, I can go center to center to center with head, heart, pelvis. Yeah. Now viewed from earth, looking to the sun, if the moon is perfectly aligned it blocks the full light of the sun and there's a halo or a radiance of light. So in my visualization as I'm sitting there, if I'm looking from pelvis up to head with heart perfectly aligned, then the heart blocks the head. Right. What does that mean to me? The heart blocks the thinking head. This head. Yeah. This all this negative thinking, Guru just said too much negative thinking. Yeah, this is too much desire, passion, drive, ego. ego. Yeah. yeah, and so the posture in the middle of that is a humility posture, but this is present time. And so, in the present time, you can eclipse your ordinary self, your ordinary thinking mind your ordinary patterns of thought, your ordinary patterns of conditioned thought and action. If you eclipse that, then you transcend, not you surpass, yeah. transcend your ordinary self to your extraordinary self. This is extraordinary. Mm, yeah. That's when you can then connect to something that's outside of you, bigger than you, greater than you, that you're a part of. Yeah. When you're caught in this little self, or the ego self, there's nothing else important. Yeah, you're self-absorbed. Yeah, in the with ego your end, don't you, really? yeah aspirations or your dreams, mm -hmm. or you're 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 overcome with all of your stuff. Yeah. Bust through all of that and find posture. Guruji called it posture. I call it eclipse. Yeah. What happens when you get the posture? He calls it free breathing. So the moment that we actually this this crunch lunch, heavy heart, no breath. You, yeah. There's no room for the diaphragm to move. Here, the kidneys are jammed, the, the, the ribs are jammed, no room for a breath. Here, you can get a length to your breath, you can get a width to your breath, you can get a depth to your breath. That brings me into a three-dimensional reality. Yeah, and when you talk most a lot about the three-dimensional breath, don't you? Yeah, practice? because most of us are only living possibly a two-dimensional life or even just a one-dimensional life. Mm. Some people aren't even living. So a one-dimensional life is people that realize that there is a breath. Right. Okay. A two-dimensional life is realizing you breathe out and in. And so there's many two-dimensional practices out there. Yeah. Think about it, it's true. Two-dimensional breathing in a yoga practice isn't quite making it. You're a three-dimensional object yeah. traveling through space and time. That's vinyasa. Mm. Vinyasa is a mass moving through space. That's time. Yeah. We record that time through counting the mantra. Mm. Counted method, as Guruji says. And by counting it, the paradox is that flips and time no longer exists. If you get dharana, dhyana happening, if you start to eclipse the ordinary thinking mind, mm. and you transcend that to a place that you're then fixated on what you're doing, there is no time. There is only the present time. That's how we can then connect to our original nature. Yeah. And so for me, it's really, it's just beautiful to, to, that having studied now for many years where the moon is, to be so connected to that moon. 
to then take that inside and feel that. So my heart becomes my moon. My head is my sun, my pelvis is my earth. That at the same time, I can feel that column, that double helix curve of those two sun moon channels. Yeah. And then that brings me on to my dad. My dad passed away mm, nearly 10 years now, I think. Uh -huh. And uh, I had very little yoga conversation with my father. Um, but I had one special conversation with dad. We were in, we were in the van in the car and the, having arrived back to the retreat center to come to see our retreat center in New Zealand. So and Lucy and I had a retreat center in New Zealand. And uh, he'd, he'd made the change. My dad was an engineer. Uh, I'd studied design. Yeah. He was very happy, but then when I was in India doing yoga, he thought I'd completely dropped out. <laughs> <That's a laughs> it wasn't until I was over in a place like China and I had a book and a DVD that my dad actually, well, he's got some products. Yeah, yeah. Sort of acknowledged that there was something going on there. And so we didn't really have a, a, a yoga relationship in yeah. terms of conversation. But this particular day, and it was actually uh, months, the months before he died. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just thought, let's just play a word game with Dad and see in my word game, could I translate some of the sutras? Just, just to see if it's natural and ordinary thing to be connected to. Right. That it's not a different academic realm. Yeah. This is just basic philosophy. So I said to Dad, if, Dad, if I said to you, son, what comes up? He goes, day. <laughs> So he said day, yeah. he said um, house, trees, uh, cars, and this, there was a couple of people who said people, but the, the most important thing he said was things, things. Um, in that uh, is earth. Patanjali says if you study with some Yamana on the sun channel, mm. you'll understand earth. So by studying the sun, yeah. you understand earth. I mean, that's how we learn to, to, to farm, to grow, um, to harvest and all yeah, that. All this, but, yeah. Yeah? And so, but what that is in code is that earth represents solid. Earth, solid things. All things manifest. If you study the sun channel, you will see all things manifest. Mm. So I then said, Dad, so what if I said to you, moon? And he said straight away, night. Yeah. Night, stars. And so Patanjali says, if you study on the moon channel with Samyamana, Samyamana, he, you will understand the stars. Dad said, and my jaw went clang, because my dad was a Scotsman, a very stoic Scotsman, had never been to hospital. Right. Only ever been to hospital for breakages. Yeah. And it got it got burnt. He didn't have any f uh, health any ailments. ailments. Or, yeah. Uh, he was a quiet man, hence we didn't have very many <laughs> those sort of conversations. <laughs> um, but you know, he took me through fishing and working on cars, yeah. and you know, and. and it gave me a beautiful term, Johnny, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Yes. Yeah. And that's like, if you've got a problem, there's many ways to solve to the problem. Mm. Did you many. connect with him on any hobbies? or? Yeah, we topic? play golf. You play golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my first real yoga was playing golf. But anyway, so the jaw clanger was, he said, dreams. So why do you associate dreams with the moon? Night, hmm. stars, okay. dreams. So it happened at night. And I went, he's not talking about nighttime dreams. He's talking about dreams for his family, uh, okay. for his children. And then my jaw did a double clangor when he said emotions. And I didn't know that my dad <laughs> <laughs> had emotions. He was the one that if you shook hands with him, yeah. he would look that way. Ah, he didn't want to make eye contact. He didn't want to make eye contact. Why? 
either he couldn't bear the suffering that he could see inside yeah. the other person or the vice versa he yeah. didn't want others to see his suffering in his eyes yeah. and so that was a real a beautiful conversation for me because that went through went through went through went through and it was actually reading in um, Geshe Michael Roach's How Yoga Works, parallel to that, his translations. And with my thinking, it really tied in beautifully that running through your sun channel basically is the thing thought. Mm -hmm. And we don't see everything in its original nature. Running through the left channel, so the sun channel is the yeah. thing, through the moon channel is your emotional connection to the thing. Now, those two pictures need to be exact for the central channel to open up. Uh -huh. So, Patanji says, if you focus on the pole star, you'll understand the workings of the stars. The stars, in this case, are all those little synapses firing, firing. off that we were talking about yesterday in the, yeah. in the, um, the yeah, Jodhvi did a great, great class, great class on, uh, yeah, on the yoga therapy and yeah. yeah, so the stars are all the thoughts, so all of your thoughts about the thing not matching. And so, you know, I can, I can say Stu, but do I really know Stu? I have a very dark side. Y yeah, you know, but so, so my projection of Stu is yeah. this, what you and my emotional connection to Stu is this. Yeah. I just remember that elbow going into my back. And I <laughs> <laughs> it's a strong emotional reaction, yeah. Okay, but the t that's not correct. It's yeah. not really who Stu is. Yeah. He's but a I get word dancer. <laughs> <laughs> but you you get confused. Yeah. You get lost and you get stuck in that. And yeah. so we don't actually meet it in the present moment. Yeah. Until both channels are flowing the same. And that's what we're trying to do in Hatha is to get both those channels flowing no. in the same time. They're not going to be flowing here. If you're in the past and regret, I'm thinking that's Stu when he had his elbow in me. Yes. Yeah. But then I might oscillate to, actually, I'm so sore on my back, I really need Stu's elbow. <laughs> yeah. In this place, it's like, no, let's just have a yeah. nice little chat with Stu. <laughs> in the present moment, it's just being in your nature. And how, how do we take that? So it's quite easy to think of that posture when we're sitting, but how do we relate it when we're moving? Well, we can still keep those sort of yeah. alignments, can't we? Or, yeah. Or we never got to do our virus talk, Stu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. One we're of the viruses well is this. Yes. Okay. One so of the viruses. The forward folding we're talking about when you're folding. Yeah. Folding down. It's totally incorrect. It's not natural. It's totally not natural. Grace is falling with style. Mm. Okay? Grace is understanding that we're in a conversation with gravity. And in order to get that eclipsing alignment, we need to be in Earth and we need to be in, in our sun and aligned. Yeah. We can move with that. Yeah. So we don't have to keep that eclipse in that like rigid sense. Yeah, no, it doesn't have to be a pole. But what we do need to have is all three bundas yeah. or the essence of them and we don't want to cut this one off mm. this one is so important this uh jalan harabanda it regulates you ujjayi and so our talk yesterday was all about the nervous system mm. and and um uh what is it sympathetic nervous system parasympathetic nervous system yeah. and balancing those out it's a little bit like balancing out sun and moon and so in my natural play and flow with the practice, listening to Guruji say, head up, head down, head up, head down. There's a pattern for a designer. Yeah. Head up, head down. So let's then look at the order of that. And so a natural sun breath, a natural sun breath is opening up like a flower. Right. Okay, now so within pattern, there is the opposite. So the opposite of head coming 
last yeah. is head coming first. So on the exhalation, as the head comes first, of course there's a relationship to Uddiyana Bandha. As the head comes like this, the navel goes back. Drawing in, yeah. You're drawing in to go down to your, your forward bend. And then Trini 3 is an opening again from that heart and the head. Chatwari is head down. Yeah. It's not head up. Even though there's a photograph of Guruji and Chatwari like this, it's incorrect. That was Guruji at 75 doing that photograph for Lina Mialli for a book. And Guruji was doing what he called camera drishti. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to have your head down. Mm. There's a pattern. Head up, head down. That's the way. Head up, Trini. Chatwari, head down. Pancha, head up. Shat, head down. Sapta, heads last. On Sapta, we did the jump. Yes. And if we had the head up, the jump doesn't work. Mm. If you have the head down, the jump works. Yeah. So again, natural, what is your true natural nature? Is to move like an animal? Mm. That's a big quantum step, Stu. To do martial arts, to be hit and dragon, you know, yeah, be, be, flowing yeah, yeah, to in order to be like a crane or a bird or a bakasana or an ustrasana or a bekasana, you need to learn first, you like we did on the beach in Goa, yes. the baby sequence. Yeah. For an adult to try and be an animal form or for an adult to be its original nature, we have to go back. We have to go back, unwind the, the incorrect patterns of conditioned Movement. movements mm -hmm. which are steeped in regret or future. And so if we can learn to go back to our original nature, when we arrive, what do we arrive with? First city. Mm. The first city when we arrive was the power of awareness. Inside a power of awareness is the power of attention. Inside of a power of attention is the power of inquiry. That's what our mind and intelligence for, is why am I here? Okay, so it's to learn to live intelligently and then to turn it on itself to ask why, what, where, when, how. So where am I now? Where did I come from? What am I? What am I doing? Where am I going? Those are the five basic questions that are deep undercurrents that maybe stay down there. For me, they rose up. Right. They rose up to find out what is my original nature. Full vinyasa, back to the beginning, we're here in nature, we're yes. sitting in nature, we are an animal. It's our ego that steps us out and makes us greater than all the other animals. We farm them, we kill them, we do everything with them yeah. for us. And that's th th what we do with everything, the whole planet, we just rape and pillage it. And so getting back to our original nature is to, to realize that we are part of this organism. Mm. We, we are part of it. We are Earth's n animals. And, and so the, that's all come to me through making a triangle, making a tree. Yeah. Those have been physical metaphors to flip things from the outside to go to the inside. So even though we might be internal here with our thoughts or here, our, our mind is active. And usually an active mind means it's going out through the senses. And so what the yoga is doing is through pratihara is turning the senses into this, this, this physical whole universe here, this whole community here. One of the students today was saying, John, you talk to my body today. Yeah. And then my body talked to my mind, and my mind understood, and my body felt trusted. Yes. And basically it was just learning. I said to her, you must know autocratic, democratic, laissez-faire. I call them the three camels. Right. King Ustra, Prince Lagu, and <laughs> Queen Capita. Right. Or the king, the captain, the queen. Guruji had all these qualities he taught as the king, the front of the class. 
he would teach at the front of the class. But there he was, the captain, right in there doing his adjustments. And he was also the shepherd, which is laissez-faire. Uh -huh. He would stand back and allow his students to go their natural flow, stop them from falling over the cliff, stop them from the big wolf getting them. Guruji understood the self-politics. So there are three ministers within us, autocratic, democratic, laissez-faire. And Lotus is so simple. Autocratic, let the lift, leg lift the leg. We can understand there's dorsiflexion, lateral rotation. The captain comes in and we relax. It's just learning to relax the body and place it in there. If we understand that matrix, that way it all's organized, then we become more uh, in our natural form of free movement, free breathing, free movement. So I did mention that posture that Guruji was talking about. If you've got your three bandhas working, you've got a head, heart, re pelvis relationship. If you've got that alignment working, you've got space for that three-dimensional breath. Yeah. So that three-dimensional breath allows you to be in that present moment, space in your body. You're home in your own body. You're secure in your own body, safe to relax. And then you realize how special you are. And that's, that's what I was putting in. You might have mentioned that we went to the prison a couple of days ago. Yes, yeah, I did mention it on at the beginning of this, but that just before you came here, you went in, uh, in with again with Josephine because they're doing fantastic work with the prison service here as well. Yeah, Josephine's done an amazing work. The last eight years, she's sort of been working for love, yeah. trying to get funding, with along with another, another lady. Um, it's been remarkable. Um, the work that she's been doing. In fact, she went to do yoga and Bollywood dancing with the, the clients, they call them, mm. the, the prisoners. And um, she managed to somehow inspire the guards. The guards started to practice with them. Mm. And then she started training the guards to teach. And then her and a colleague have just produced a prison yoga teaching manual. Yeah. And she's been to the U.S. and she's then started doing yoga therapy. Uh, and that's where we were talking about the nervous yeah. system yesterday. But they've also produced some great um, sort of scientific work, a study on, on the reaction of doing the yoga in the prisons on their mental yeah. health and that sort of thing. Absolutely. The, so the, uh, and, and, and also what Josephine's doing is in particular Ashtanga Vinyasa yoga. Yes. Um, and it's Hatha yoga balancing out the sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous systems. Yeah. One other thing I wanted to bring up with you as well, because it's been really, really quite evident in all the classes we've done with you, and, and, and also we see it in nature with the animals and the, 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 about the fun, that it, it, it needs to also be fun for you to do and not too draining or... or, or we, we need to approach it in the right way, but we also need to be enjoying what we're doing. And that's very much what we've experienced uh, over this week. But perhaps you could just talk about that a little bit as well, because it links in with the nature thing, because we see it all the time with animals playing and, and that sort of thing. But sometimes that's lost within the, in many yoga studios and with, with many teachers. Yeah, well, Guruji was a playful teacher. When he was in his 60s, he must have been even more, you know, when, when uh, Richard Freeman and um, David Svensson and you know, those guys, they got him really at his, his height, you know, when he was doing the pranayama with them and handstands with them. And I met him when he was 75. And my first, my first visit to Mysore, the front row were doing handstands and Sri Namaskar B. Ah, interesting. And handstands were called tricks. Yeah. And the stories of uh, Guruji and Manju used to have competitions walking up and down stairs in handstand. Mm. And so Guruji had definitely had a playful nature, especially to their children, Guruji and Ma's children. They played yoga until 12 and then became structured after 12. Right. And so we don't, we don't learn as adults a playful play. They did. Yeah. And then they put structure. Yeah. And so Guruji, Guruji had the ability to be the, the, uh, the king you're going to be practicing, but he had the ability to be captain, to be in there playing with you. And so when I group people together to do practice, like there was some groups today, yeah. 
I practice third series synchronously with Lino Miali. I did second series with Lino, Dina Kingsberg, myself, and there was one other. There was four of us doing second series in synchronicity when we were learning it. Yeah. And uh, you weren't on your own. You were in this together. And, you know, Guruji would, would create a, a drama to, and, and, and a tension and a, and a seriousness. And then he would make some comment or joke, bad man, bad lady, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then there would be laughter. Yeah. So there was always some laughter. And so for me, my childhood, very much growing up with my, my um, New Zealand life, I was out playing a lot of playing and I was very much a Peter Pan still am very much yeah. a, a, a Peter Pan um, and for me the a way to learn is to learn through play and so because I got to practice synchronously in Mysore but before Mysore my first teacher was Derek Island yeah. and I practiced with Derek now now that I'm turning 60 in a couple of months, a couple of months time, <laughs> I love to play with my students. Yeah. And by playing with my students, I, you know, you've been enjoying your classes, mm. but my teaching team and I have been playing also afterwards. Yeah. You've heard yeah. us while you've been doing your treatments. Yeah. And that's because I'm, I'm picking up on their youthfulness, mm. their inner child. And if my inner child can meet their inner child and we start to play, we again eclipse mm. our ordinary, boring old adult self. Yeah. You know, it's a bit like in the Peter Pan story where um, Robin Williams is Peter and Dustin Hoffman is Hook. Yeah. And uh, there's a point there, one point, when the kids say to, 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 um, to um, Robin Williams, uh, to Peter, you've turned into an adult. And he had to remember what it was to be a child again yeah. and to find that inner child and to find the magic. And it's again, how did he get to fly? Happy thoughts. And so that's the second law of, of, of thermodynamics. The th second law of motion in Newton is uh, F equals mass times acceleration. Force equals mass times acceleration. That is, by the way, the, the vinyasa formula. It's algebra. Just change force to B, big capital B, breath, equals little m times little, little v. Big breath, breath equals body times movement, vinyasa. So force equals mass times acceleration. Yeah. Put zero as force. No breath, no movement. Mm. Just change big B to violent, violent breath or anger breath yeah. moves the prana that moves the breath that moves the body. An angry thought has an angry action. A love thought has a love action. A happy thought count, control your mind, to free your mind. A free-flowing mind, free-flowing breath, free-flowing body. You are in your natural form. Hmm. Our nature is to be relaxed, Stu. Our, that's our nature. Yeah, here is so relaxing, isn't it? Both it is so still calm. tonight yeah. that I really want to take those canoes out <laughs> and go and have a paddle yeah. to actually be in it. It's yeah. drawing us out into to, yeah. to be there. Because we, we're in a place where we're not self-important. Mm. When we're in a self-important, we either get caught in the past or caught in the future. Mm. And we're not spontaneous. We're a child is spontaneous. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what I like to try and create. And, and, and so, the, you know, we hear the feedback. as students that haven't been with us before. Yeah. Um, you've known me for a few years now. Yeah. And you've had them on the, on the couch. Um, and the feedback is that, wow, this is a bit weird. Yeah. It's a bit weird because we're actually having some fun. Yeah. It's such a shame, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that it's not always like that. Yeah. yeah. It's hard work. Yeah. 
it's dynamic and hard work, but it's got to be fun yeah. to be uh, transformative. So that's the other thing is that transcending is to transcend our ordinariness to our extraordinaries, is to transform ourselves to that place where we are living intelligently. Yeah. That we're able to go back to the fourth city, which is imagination. Yeah. So remember I'd mentioned those cities, awareness, attention, uh, inquiry, and imagination. What gets lost straight away is the imagination. If there's no imagination, the inquiry falls away. The interest falls away. If there's no inquiry or interest, what is my body doing? How is my body breathing and moving? If there's that quiet inquiry is not there, there's no attention. Your mind's gone. So if there's no attention, there's fuck all awareness. <laughs> Sorry. You can't say that <laughs> There's no awareness. Yeah. Okay, and so what yoga is about is intentionally directing or channeling awareness through attention. There's a movement out there called mindfulness. Guruji just had it all in posture, free breathing, looking place. Mind control through a breathing system. Method was counted method, vinyasa. It was so simply pre presented. Yeah. We take it with the simplicity and play with it, Stu. Mm. And we Perfect. might find that connection to our inner self, that inner peace, that inner tranquility. Yeah. Perfect. Back right here. Yeah. Cool. Thanks so much, John. It's been absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Ah. yeah thanks, man. Great. Listen. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. And anyway. Maybe you want to interview interview Josephine because Josephine also includes the Bollywood dancing. So this retreat's also been uh, so that adds a big deal of fun. fun too. Yeah. yeah, 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 perfect. But when I see a fellow student teacher, what inspires me about um, Josephine is that she's always smiling and giving out positives and being happy. And I hope that's a reflection of a teacher as well. Yeah, I, it comes I, down. So mind. for me, it's really important that I'm, you know, I might have a seriousness, which Guruji had. Yeah. So I do have a seriousness and I have the maturity now, but I really do want to be smiley, happy, because a smile meets a yeah, smile. Yeah, I meets mean, a smile, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. And so I look forward to seeing you all again. Yeah, thanks so much. And thank you very much, Stu. Cheers, John.